Well, I'm delighted to say, making his debut with McLean's TV, we have a Ulster and Ireland international, Paddy Wallace. Paddy, we're delighted to have you here. Can you tell us what's the latest with the injury? And I know you're back playing for the Ravens, so is, is everything okay for you? Like? Everything's great. Uh, I have been past clear to play, obviously. I played two games with the Ravens, and uh, I'm set to make uh, my first appearance this weekend. So, as you can imagine, I'm buzzing. I'm very excited. Can't wait to get um, Ravenhill, the new Ravenhill. You talk about the new Ravenhill and buzzing, and the, the, there are two words that go hand in hand. Now, Ravenhill has just been an incredible transformation in recent years, yeah. hasn't it? Ulster seems to be the biggest show in town at the moment. Uh, you know, it's it's always been on the up, and in the last few years, with the stadium redevelopment and the success of the team, it's uh, become more and more popular. I notice it out in the street. You know, you're you're well known around here, around Lisburn Road, and. Uh, you know, it just shows the popularity that's coming. You get guys like Tommy Bow coming back to the province. Uh, Ruin Pinar signed on. Roy Bass has just re-signed. Uh, it's great, and, and things are only going to get better. I hope. But you talk about things are only getting better. I remember doing an inter pro games up at Ravenhill. There might have been two hundred people at it, mm -hmm. and even in, in the start of the whole Ulsterism, remember you used to have to go and take the boat across and play matches and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. It's all changed now, isn't it? Well, it has indeed. I mean, I've I've had a taste of that now for. I say 15 years of my career. I made my first debut. It's funny. I've been back playing for the A's there. I made my debut for the A's in 1998, uh, and uh, that year I think they went on to win the the Heineken Cup. It was back then. That later in that season. So I've seen the transformation from then till now, and uh, the progress has been astonishing, and the success of the team now uh, matches the the fans desire to see and, and the support that we get is fantastic so it's nice to give them a product they can be proud of. You talk about a product to be proud of, there's a thing that, that, that strikes me about, about rugby, you've gone professional and you know obviously you're professional uh, sports stars at the moment, you've never lost the gra with the fans, these are still very very much part of the fans and the fans identify with you it's not the way you see other professional sports where the players tend to move away Ulster and their fans are so closely mm -hmm. intertwined yeah we're certainly a good grasp on our surroundings and the community and they're what what drives us we're very yeah accessible and available to the fans as well and I think that helps that relationship it's not uh, you know we don't put ourselves up on a pedestal like maybe other sports across the world. You mean footballers, basically, yeah, that's right, fair enough. No. We, know we know that, we know that, fair enough, I know, yeah. But, uh, yeah, and uh, you know, I think that, that that has helped and, and makes the fans feel that they're part of something as well. They're not just supporting somebody that they can't meet and have a chat to when they meet them in the coffee shop. You know, we're available. We realise, uh, you know, how much they mean to us and, and vice versa, so... As long as that relationship stays, it helps when you're winning as well. Uh, it always helps to win too. Yeah. I'll go in for a couple of serious questions now too. Who's the biggest messer in the dressing room? <laughs> <laughs> now, messers now. Uh, I say Tommy Bo would fancy himself as a bit of a prankster. Uh -huh. uh, he thinks his jokes are funnier uh, than most of us. But... Uh, <laughs> There's a few boys you wouldn't cross now. Uh -huh. you getting the wrong side of two, Dan two would be he'd cut you to shreds. So would Rory Best now as well. And Rory, and yeah. him such a gentleman no, too. The, the country gent. Oh, yeah. the country gent. He's yes, Rory. On him now. All right. Cross him. And can I ask who is the one who uses the most toiletries? Like who's the oh, one that walks out smelling like an old? Let you guess there. Uh, Plays on the wing, surprisingly. It wouldn't be. Th it would be. It's either Gilroy or Thrimble. Uh, Gilroy, you're right. The Gilroy, prince, there you are. I knew. Listen, yeah. he was up. He yeah, up one of the matches. Calling the prince now. Oh, do they? Yeah. Do they call him? Because yeah. I was up in the cookery <laughs> box one night and I walked yeah. in. And I thought there must have been four girls in the place. <laughs> and then I saw Gilroy sitting in the corner. Yeah, you know? that's, that's about right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But it's, it, it, you know, you, you talk about those lads and a wee bit of yeah. crack. I got it. Shows the spirit within within, within the squad. But a strong squad, Paddy. Like you know, it's it's it hard is, to get yeah. in there and nail your place and keep it. Oh, exactly, and. Uh, yeah, that's I think the sign of a successful squad is that it has depth and there's depth across the board in every position as more so in my position unfortunately but uh, there's so much you know I'm, I'm as you say one of the older players in the squad mm -hmm. uh, so my roles maybe changed a wee bit from uh, somebody who was guaranteed a starting place week in week out now I can try and mentor a few of these young guys coming through and give back a bit mm -hmm. uh, to the 
to rugby or to these guys and help them out whatever way I can because uh, I know there were people there for me whenever I was starting out and, and uh, you know that, that certainly helped my progression. I have to say I really enjoy the atmosphere at Ravenhill. It, it's, uh, I think David Humphreys and all the team have nurtured this great atmosphere you know and obviously of course if you keep uh, being successful it helps. Mm -hmm. uh, the Pro 12 I see as are basically second favourites for the Pro 12 after Leinster. I think you're better than Leinster. Do you? Uh huh. Yeah. I do. I just think listen, that you have more depth. I think yeah. you. I think you have more cover. I uh -huh. think you. Have, I think you're greater uh, commitment to them. I, I think you have greater passion. Uh -huh. I think the passion that Ulster have is something that that is really uh, caught on by the fans. Look, that's really my humble yeah. opinion as a fan. Well, th that strength and depth is so important. I mean, especially if we go on a good run in the Heineken. You know, there's so many games to play. Uh, and so many resources get used up and there's always going to be injuries. We are struck very badly with injuries come the end of the season last year and even though we had won the league and finished the top of the league, uh, when you go to that playoffs, it's whoever's got the probably the least injuries going into that, they'll be favoured uh, because everybody has a good start in 15. It's whenever you uh, scratch the surface of that and those guys can't start. It's the guys that step in, are they able to do that? And also have shown this year that the strength and depth is there whenever your number's called out uh, you can always do a job and uh, that's something Mark as our coach has been driving and uh, hopefully come the end of the year we won't have too many injuries. So. Yeah well 2014, now 2013 you were struck badly by injuries mm -hmm. so whenever you look forward to the last two group games in the Heineken Cup you know Montpellier and obviously uh, Leicester uh -huh. Vital games. It's okay to get the bonus points against Treviso, which was hard earned, particularly yeah. the away one. But those are vital games for us. Though. Yeah, it was disappointing, obviously, on Sunday watching uh, Montpellier give away that last try. Uh, so it makes it all to play for. It. We're lucky we got the draw through, and we've got an eight-day turnaround, so that gives us a bit more time to to get over a few niggly injuries and stuff, and get a good week's prep going into into the Leicester game. Uh, obviously, we have to take care of Montpellier first, uh, and. And, and get our home win and then everything to play for you know the European Cup is great to get out of your group it's even better to get a home quarter final though yeah I'd love to see a home quarter final for you you know but I, I tell you what Leicester won't fancy playing this you know because like us they're, you're a driven team I think you're now mm -hmm. what what fifth uh, basically, I don't want to talk about, about odds but you're, I think you're seven to one or something to win the, to win the Heineken uh -huh. I think you're fifth uh -huh. uh, in, in, and that's just about right but I think you're not far away yeah well, I mean certainly I mean, I was here for 10 years before we qualified for the quarterfinals. I know we've done it now. This could be our fourth year in a row. So we have the pedigree now, and, and it's just a matter of, I guess, trying to stay fit, first of all. But getting that home quarterfinal is massive, because uh, if, if you can get that, it gives you a huge advantage going forward. And then, you know, you're in the competition, then uh, it's about... Uh, you know, any of those teams in the last four can can win on a day. So, and of course, why couldn't it be us? And of course, it goes without saying. You know, uh, Neil Britton worked with me for a long time. In UTV yeah. Sport, they're all up there with humps. You know, and it's a sellout no matter when. I, I don't. I don't think it would matter who you play. I think it's just going to be a sellout in Ravenhill, and the new the, the new Ravenhill is only going to add to that yeah. atmosphere. If you could get a home quarter final, that would be some effort. Probably. It would be, yeah, and especially when the stands finish and we get up to eighteen as well. You know, we're filling out the the stadium. It's fourteen thousand, I think, capacity at the moment. Uh, come quarter final time, the stand should be finished and they'll bump that up to 18 plus. So, be some atmosphere. Great to be involved in. Well, I'm not going to put you under pressure, but uh, we'll just say Ulster are there, thereabouts, and uh -huh. we'll leave it to after Leicester. Would that do? Yeah. When it comes to the hiding, and uh -huh. that's fair enough. But then I want to move on then as well to uh, uh, February. Uh, in between you know, the latter stages of the Heineken and of course the Six Nations. Yeah. One of the most exciting, I think, and eagerly awaited competitions every year. There's something about the Six Nations, I think. Uh -huh. There always is. It's fantastic. Uh, it's funny, it comes at a time when there's been a lot of rugby played and still a lot of rugby to play and you're, you're caught in the middle and all eyes are on you. Some something sometimes the league takes a backward step mm -hmm. uh, whenever the success of Ulster drags players down to Dublin and you know, it's great that they represent Ireland. Uh, but from an Ulster point of view it's it's very important to keep keep winning your games uh, in that period whenever you lose uh, your internationals. Uh, that's key to our progression in the Rabo. But uh, as a player uh, that is growing up your your one aims to play for Ireland and play for Ireland in a, in a Six Nations. 
Is it is it difficult for players? You know, uh, sometimes you know, uh, uh, Joe Smith there recently he called a couple of their lads up. They played against Australia and then they were they were released uh -huh. to their provinces the following week to go back and play for us in a Pro yeah. Twelve as opposed to playing against the All Blacks. Uh -huh. Is that difficult for a player to get it into their it head or their be, psyche? Or? It can be when you're jumping squads all the time. I have something I've experienced a lot of. It's hard. Uh, first of all, completely new playbook. You have to get your head around that all the, your training that you've been doing for Ireland. Suddenly, you've got two days to prepare for a game for Ulster. That's hard to get your head around, especially dealing with disappointment that comes with not being selected to play in, like you say, the all against the All Blacks. So that's something to get your head around. Uh, I like your word on their playbook. Yeah, you give me a wee insight there, and giving the uh -huh. the viewers a wee. Is that just basically what the tactics or the style of play, or the formation, the way the way the coach wants also, wants the game to play? Yeah, all your patterns of play, going from line out, where you go, first rock, second rock, third rock, mm -hmm. uh, scrum time as well, kickoffs, your formations on kickoffs, and what you want to do whenever you receive the ball. Uh, oh, there's there's there's. Talking about playbooks, I think. You well, know, I think, you know, what, well, I know, and, and they say sports all about just all about inches and yeah. uh, most of it just the, the three or four between your ears. Uh -huh. But uh, the Six Nations, the Welsh are the favourites, Ireland obviously five games, but uh, three at home, but the yeah. two hard ones are away, England uh -huh. and France. It's yeah. going to be hard for Ireland to get uh, to get a, a, a win. Uh, I don't mean a win, but I mean an overall win in the well, Six the Nations, isn't it? I? It always is. This is the, the alternate year. You know, you always get. Uh, England and France away uh, in one year, and uh, you know when we won the Grand Slam, we had England and France uh, at home, which was helpful, and we we beat the other three teams away. Uh, yeah, it's always difficult, and uh, it depends what you know. Again, it come back to injuries. We're in Ireland were ravaged by injuries last season. Mm -hmm. and it's very hard to compete whenever we only have four professional teams in the. In, in the country to call upon players from so that could put us at a disadvantage if we are not fit hopefully we can stay fit and take the success we've had in the European competition and bring that through to the Six Nations because all the problems is no they can beat the top French sides the top English sides top uh, sides in Europe on their day uh, in Europe so there's no reason why we can't come together and reproduce that on an international level. and I think coming hearing voices and, and opinions from the Ulster players coming out of the camp they're very excited about the new coaching set up there as well. You're, you're blessed I think to be under Mark Anscombe who clearly looks to be a very very uh, very well clued in coach mm -hmm. and then the Ireland set up with Joe Smith you mentioned it there that a lot of the players are very very pleased with it so things are looking good for uh, Ulster and Ireland. Absolutely yeah from from uh, an Irish point of view it's it's great when you hear the likes of Brian and Driscoll raving about Joe coming in as coach and you know uh, immediately you're hearing great chat from the, the rest of the guys about him and, and uh, how there's a feeling of, of real hope and optimism within the Ireland camp now that they can go on and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if they go on and win a championship this year. Paddy, I'm looking, you're sitting here, you and I, <laughs> the size of you, and the hits that are now going into rugby like that is serious, you know what I mean? You must be you must be well conditioned to get some of those thumps, some of those ignorant lads, you know, smelling like garlic, coming in, listening from MP and trying to walk all over your beautifully toned body <laughs> and your lovely face, you know what I mean? That, that right? Uh, yeah. Listen, you just, I'm always an undersized player, so I've learned to try and stay out of the way of those big boys. So it's quick feet. Quick, quick wait, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, now look. Obviously, uh, we've had a few personalities in uh, today. We're delighted to have you. And uh, McLean Bookmakers have had uh, a long, long association with Cash for Kids. Uh -huh. Okay, so they've offered you a fifty pound free yeah. bet. You knew about it, so you, it's quite an interesting one. You'll have to tell the punters what you went for. Yeah. Fifty pound Cash for Kids charity bet. There you go, Polly. Yeah. Tell them what it is. Okay. Well, I'm a, a huge NFL fan. Uh, American football, that is, and. Uh, I have picked the Seattle Seahawks to win the Super Bowl this year. Uh, there, for the reason is that the first time for a while that the Super Bowl has been played outdoors, it's been played in New York, and it's going to be freezing. Seahawks are a good outdoor team, uh, good defense, good offensive line, and uh, I think that's a cert. So you like the Seahawks and you like you like American football. You know, it's great that when you hear yeah, yeah, you like when you hear sports people coming in the club or another sport yeah. great. I love it. Great we set, I set up a league within uh, within Ulster now, so we've got more people involved, fantasy league and 
everybody throws a, a few quid in and we pick the winners of each game from each week and it all tallied up and we're coming to the close of the season now so uh, there's a big pot for to be won and uh, that's good, got something to talk about. Well, you can go back to the last in Ravenhill and tell them of Stephen MacDonald, Armagh All-Star and All-Ireland winner, uh, his free £50 cash for kids was uh, 50 quid an Ulster to win the Heineken Cup, so uh, there you are. So uh, the message <laughs> is spreading, Paddy. Paddy, thank you very much. All the very best, 2014. We'll have you back on the couch Appreciate again. It, thank, thank you. Now.